afternoon. Uh, I, I, I fondly said that this is a golden black staff meeting, which it will be for the first uh, couple segments today. As we're going to talk basketball in the first segment, with, we'll pin Brian with some questions as the Boilermakers take on Wisconsin tonight, 7 p.m. in Mackey Arena. And then, of course, uh, in, in segment two, We'll have a little football talk, a lot to talk about, actually, with the, some uh, coaching moves, recruiting, et cetera, with both Brian and Tom. And then segment three will be J.R. Rorman will join us, uh, uh, he of the family gift uh, for the for Rorman Field. So I want to thank our sponsors, State Farm Agent. And these guys have to say silent, perfectly silent. It's kind of like <laughs> if you're not watching the, uh, if you're not watching the, uh, in the uh, Senate trial where they have to also stay silent, these guys have to stay silent for another 20 minutes here, but not, not exactly. State Farm Agent Trent Johnson is and one of our sponsors, Hilton Garden Inn, when tomorrow's a big day, State HDI tonight. And, of course, Triple X on the hill. There you go, Tom. You can move your head there. Yeah, Not there. On the hill, but on the level of Purdue tradition since 1929. In fact, Kerry and Greg will be at the ball game tonight, uh, as well as, I think, about 15,000 other Purdue fans. And, uh, Brian, we'll start with you. And, Tom, you can fire away as well. But <laughs> Boilermakers have a big, you know, Everybody's down, obviously, when you lose at home to Illinois and lose soundly to the Fighting Illini, and, and everybody's asking questions, and yet uh, uh, another opportunity for Purdue uh, to, you know, in, in what looks to be a pretty must-win situation when Wisconsin comes calling tonight. Yeah, your margin for error is down to virtually nothing at home um, because the results of this season thus far have suggested that you know, Purdue's going to lose some road games the rest of the way. Yeah. Um, they've not won one, so that's obviously a pretty good indication. Purdue's got to protect its home floor uh, if it wants to get in the NCAA tournament. Um, obviously, they let one go or had one taken away from them, however you want to look at it, uh, the other night against Illinois. Um, personally, I think Illinois is this year's Minnesota. They are just a dreadful <laughs> matchup for this yeah. Purdue team as it's constructed, as Illinois is currently constructed. I think Illinois has a ringer in Kofi Coburn, he is yes, not sir. a college basketball player in any <laughs> sense of the term. Um, they have a professional guard in in Io DeSumo, and I think the combination of those two things really led to that outcome. On top of the outcome prior against Illinois, and I think overreacting to that loss <clears throat> is probably not in order. I think Mackey Arena is still a huge advantage for Purdue. I think Wisconsin is – not nearly as athletic, not nearly as big and physical as Illinois, an entirely different sort of matchup. And I think Purdue, you know, has a real good shot tonight uh, from a matchup's perspective, on top of the fact that when Purdue's played at home, Purdue's been pretty good, except for those last 20 minutes against Illinois. Yeah, they were In which of, Illinois was damn near flawless. Yeah. I think that's a big didn't part miss, of this, Didn't too. miss a shot. One of the things, and I'll let Tom get in, but one of the things that was interesting is just that Illinois' defense and Purdue's inability to get threes up, so to speak. I mean, they didn't, they didn't have enough, very many attempts. A function of Illinois' ability athletically, I mean, obviously a very different team tonight in Wisconsin defensively, though they'll play play hard defensively. It's, is that a function? Of, is that a formula against Purdue where you try to uh, just keep them off the three-point line as much as humanly possible, or is that just a function of, of Illinois being able to be able to do that type of thing because of its athletic team? Well, Purdue's probably Purdue's biggest offensive limitation this year. And people can say, oh, this guy's not scoring, so Purdue's not a good offensive team. No. Their problem is that at this stage of these guys' developments, <clears throat> Purdue lacks playmakers in its backcourt. They yeah. lack guys who can do much off the dribble. They lack guys who can make people pay for hard closeouts. Guys who really struggle to get themselves open. <clears throat> they will get better over time, but right now some of these guys are sophomores. They're just not at a place yet where they can do that. And when you have supreme athleticism like Illinois does, you go over every screen, you get on their hip, and you stay on their hip. You take away the three. And in Illinois' case, you make Purdue beat you one-on-one -on -one in the post. Just so happens you have Kofi Comer, who is Megatron <laughs> down there. And it's just it's a mix that makes Illinois that matchup. But to your question, um, Purdue's guards, the, the, if you zero in on them, they're not necessarily tricky covers for that reason. They're, they're, they lack quickness. They lack speed. They lack playmaking ability. At, again, at this stage of their career, Eric Hunter, Sasha Stefanovich, these guys will get better over time, but they're not in a place yet where when they are getting zeroed in on by really good, tenacious athletes, um, that's, playing, that's not playing to produce strengths. And I think, yes, that might be a way Purdue to – go after Purdue from here on out for opponents, 
But two things. One, if you do that, you are asking Travion Williams and Matt Harms. You're, or you're opening the door for them to kill you. Yeah. And the last time somebody did that, Michigan mm -hmm. put John Teske one-on-one -on -one with Travion Williams. Travion Williams got 36 points. Um, also, the athleticism Illinois has in its backcourt is really good. <laughs> advanced. Yeah. It's yeah. not necessarily what Purdue's going to see on a night-in and night-out basis. People can try to do to Purdue what Illinois did, but they're going to have to find a way to stop Travion Williams and Matt Harms in space one-on-one -on -one around the basket, and they're going to have to do it without the sort of athleticism Illinois did it with. Yeah, talk about Matt Harms' season to this point. Uh, Brian um, has dealt with some injury, yeah. and uh, is he 100%? I mean, you said time and again the big men are Purdue's best players. If they're not excelling, obviously Purdue's going to struggle to win, but Harms has been a guy who sort of seemed to be in a little bit of a flux. Yeah, yeah. Um, He's not 100%. I don't think he's even close to 100%. I think he's probably closer to 80%. Um, and when you're a guy who has to use every ounce of yourself to throw your body around to match up, match up physically against certain people, you really need to be 100%. Um, I don't think he's had a great year. I think a lot's gone into that. He's had a concussion. He's had a couple concussions. Obviously, he's got the hit pointer now. I think Purdue, you know, ever since the Virginia game, has been tinkering with these big lineups. And as the story I just put on the site an hour ago kind of kind of details, that's about two things. One, trying to maximize those guys' value, but also not marginalizing one or the other. And I think Matt Harms has been the victim at times of being marginalized by those two lineups because you're taking seven foot three, you're putting him away from the basket as an entry man more than anything. You're having him guard the four basically, which means pulling him away from the rim more. You're asking him to rebound from that position, but he has to condition himself to get to the rim very quickly, whereas normally he's yeah. already at the rim. I think some circumstances have played against him, but he is not having the sort of season I thought he'd have. Um, but he, he has to get healthy. I mean, I, I yeah. think the health is a big part of this right now. He just doesn't, doesn't look right moving up and down the floor. Also, Kofi Coburn is the rare player who is – the worst case scenario matchup for both him and Travion Williams. Yeah, so showed. kind of recency bias there in terms of looking at both of those guys. Don't judge them based off what happened against Kofi Coburn. Judge them based on what happens against the other really good big guys in the Big Ten. And Travion Williams got 36 against John Teske. Matt Harms got 26 against Daniel Aturu. So, I mean, they've done some really positive things. I think you'd like, you know, maybe a little bit more consistency, a little <clears> bit more efficiency. Uh, from both of those guys, a lot more impact, but I think both of them are having solid seasons. I just expected Harms to be pretty close to a first-team All Big Ten level. That was probably not realistic on my part because I had no idea Luke Garza was Luca Garza was going to turn into Superman. <laughs> I had no idea Daniel Latoura was going to turn into Superman, and I had no idea that Kofi Coburn was going to be RoboCop from day one yeah. in the Big Ten. I mean, there's been unbelievable big guys in the Big Ten all year, and yeah. that's not going to change. No, not going to change. It's interesting in the Purdue's <clears throat> balance. You know, Hunter comes in at ten and a half a game. Uh, uh, Stefanovich at nine, nine and a half. Harms at ten. Williams at eleven point three in terms of scoring. But one of the things Wisconsin brings too is balance and guys that can shoot it, bigs that can shoot it. Mm -hmm. What uh, talk about that? I know you did a little bit in your preview about what uh, challenges that does make for Purdue. Is it as simple as which team can in, in, enforce its will tonight? I mean, if Purdue plays the game inside and inside and out it wins or in, but if Wisconsin shoots the ball well it can win what how do you view that well Purdue has been really good at home this season yeah because it's been able to make shots at home when Illinois took away the threes obviously you're something very different than what you've been I don't again I don't think Wisconsin necessarily is built to do the same thing um, but I think it goes without saying three-point shooting really matters tonight because Wisconsin maybe isn't an elite three-point shooting team but <clears throat> they get threes from everybody yeah they're both of their big men can step out and shoot. That's always going to be a challenge for Purdue's big guys to get out there and guard them one-on-one, -on -one, especially if Purdue's rotations otherwise aren't great, which Purdue's rotations against Illinois weren't ideal. There were a lot of reasons for that, most notably Kofi Kober rolling to the basket off pick and roll straight yeah. into the guy who was <laughs> supposed to be closing out on the yeah. shooter up at the top of the key. Um, but Purdue's just got to be able to make shots at home. The shots go in in Mackey Arena, and Purdue just – that is going to be a big difference tonight, Purdue keeping Wisconsin from 
making 12 or 13 threes and Purdue preferably making nine or 10 itself. That's, you know, been proven by the results this season. That's really important. You know, one guy who has played well, obviously, of late is No Gel Eastern. Um, bringing a strong effort every night, playing his same trademark tough defense, but also um, providing some scoring punch, too. And I think, yeah. I think you, Ron, you've talked about leadership, too. Uh, I, I got to assume he, he's one of those individuals that has to lead yeah. vocally by his example if Purdue wants to you know, right its ship and, and get back on track. Right. Well, from a scoring perspective, I know that's what a lot of people focus on, which is that a red herring if there ever was one. When he's your leading scorer, that's great for him. That's good for Purdue. But that means there's a void there to be filled. And yeah. Purdue needs its big guys scoring. It needs its big guys scoring, and it needs its – it's guards making threes to complement the big guy scoring. When Nogel Eastern is your leading scorer, a couple of games ago he was your eighth leading scorer for the season. When he is scoring, that means what you need to be scoring isn't scoring. Yeah, I agree. Purdue does not need Nogel Eastern scoring. That he is, again, is great for him, but it means there's a huge void there that somebody's had to fill, and he's kind of been filling it. Um, but to the point here, from a leadership perspective, I think that – Look, the last three games, Purdue's played the two toughest teams in the Big Ten, probably Michigan State and Illinois, and played in one of the most toughest environments in College Park. Who's the one guy who showed up in all three games? No Jell Easter. No Jell Easter. That's probably a reflection of leadership. I know, you know, one thing Matt Painter said all season long, and I think he's probably saying this with No Jell Easter in mind, is that maybe when you're not playing great, it's a little bit harder to lead than it would be otherwise. But he's definitely led with his effort. And in terms of playing well, I do think part of Nogel Eastern's story this season was he came in putting pressure on himself to be more of a scorer when that's not what's defined him as a player. You know, fans talk a lot about him scoring. We've written some about Purdue wanting him to score a little bit more. That doesn't necessarily mean Purdue is going to build his off, its offense around him. Yeah. But I do think he put some pressure on himself to do that, struggled a little bit with it. That probably affected his spirit to a certain extent. Maybe he didn't feel like he was playing as well as he needed to be in order to be kind of that kind of that vocal and example-driven leader, so to speak. But the last couple of games here, obviously, his effort has been really good. I don't think his effort's ever been bad. Yeah. But his effort, you know, has been really good, and I think that's obviously an inkling of leadership, too. How do you know Matt Painter's talked this year several times about the fight quotient, I guess, in terms of Purdue's, uh, you know, ability to – what, whatever, the, however, you, however you define that, uh, it, it, it appeared, and again, Illinois had a lot to do with that, that Illinois uh, let the air out of Purdue's balloon uh, by doing a lot of things. How do, you, how, do you, how do you grade Purdue's effort so far in terms of, I mean, we've talked about Eastern being consistent, but is that a function of age or knowing what it takes to, to compete at this level, or, or do you think that that's uh, overstated, overdone by some folks in terms of uh, Purdue's lack of yeah. fight at times? Well, I mean, I think there's probably – you always have to be careful with a word like competitiveness, toughness, because you don't want to make it sound like you're questioning it yeah. um, in terms of a personal indictment. But I, I do think Purdue has a lot of really nice kids, yeah. obviously guys who, who want to win, but I don't know if they have guys who will, you know, step on you. <laughs> well, that uh, would be the next question, yeah. Recent precedent to win a basketball game. I don't know if there, <clears throat> there, no there are guys who will lift a chair over their head <laughs> trying to brain somebody to win a basketball game. You know, I think they're, they're really nice guys, really good kids, want to do well, want to win. But I don't know if they, there's that cutthroat sort of killer mentality that a lot of Matt Painter's teams have had in a productive way. Um, a lot of teams, you know, Purdue plays against have. That being said, in certain environments at home, you know, the home environment has lifted Purdue to where they can be significantly tougher than Michigan State. Couldn't lift them to be significantly tougher than Illinois, who, you know, has a very distinct edge to it. Yeah, um, no question. Got a lot of street kids who don't really aren't affected by things. You have obviously physical toughness when you have the biggest, most physical guy in the Big Ten. That stuff matters. Um, but I do think from a toughness, from a competitive standpoint, you know, Purdue could probably be a little bit better than it is. Uh, also something that guys probably grow into over time. You're playing a lot of sophomores. Um, you're, playing a lot of, you're playing a lot of guys who, you know, their best basketball at Purdue should be ahead of them. Uh, you have 
really no seniors at this point who are, you know, playing frontline, frontline roles for you. So this is a team that, um, you know, could grow into that over time. It's just not there yet. Yeah. How do they get Proctor back on track? Uh, Such a big part of the team early on. Um, I know teams watch film, but uh, I think he was a guy people envisioned. Yeah. Maybe providing more of a consistent scoring and shooting role and it seems like his role continues to diminish. Well, he was that early in the season, <clears throat> yeah. but even when he was producing, you know, the sort of offense he was getting, he was always kind of a piece, you know. He was always going to be kind of a system guy, a guy that motion or produced sets, whatever it might be, had to generate angles for, had to generate opportunities to get into the lane and finish higher percentage shots. He was never that sort of alpha sort of score that Purdue obviously lacks all across the board, especially in its backcourt. Um, as big as Big Ten player, you know, arrived, the higher caliber of athlete, the higher caliber of height and length that he's he's been faced with, it was really Butler where he yeah. started to really, really yeah. struggle. Um, but there haven't been many games where he's against really high-level competition, high majors, whatever it might be, where he's really thrived. And that's probably, to some extent, the move from one level to another just being a pretty big deal. It didn't look like it right away when you're scoring 26 against Green Bay, right. but yeah, you know, you're doing it against Green Bay. So I, I just think this is just probably maybe closer to his reality than some of the more productive days of his you know, one-year Purdue career to date suggested would be his reality. All right, we're going to take a short break, come back. I want to also – we'll start the next segment, talk a little bit about Alan Griffin and, and that uh, – uh, just as an overall consideration of what the suspension was and, and a little bit of the landscape of college basketball on the heels of Kansas, Kansas State as well. And then we'll get into some football with Tom Dean Hart too. So take a short break. We'll be back in two minutes on Golden Black Live. Dive into the new Bada. X Family Restaurant in West Lafayette. Ladies and gentlemen, gold medalist David Badia will now attempt a triple X five second toss back. Can he do it? And it's good! Triple X Root Beer makes thirsted joy. Going to the Purdue game? Stay at the Hilton in West Lafayette at the Wabash Landing with over 100 inviting family friends. Guest rooms located just blocks from campus, the Hilton Garden Inn is the choice for Purdue fans. New this year, we are now serving dinner. Savor a delicious chef-prepared entree or simply enjoy an appetizer or dessert. Full bar service is available 24-7. So when the big Purdue game is tomorrow, stay with HGI tonight. Call for reservations and... Water up! Accidents happen. That's why State Farm agent Trent Johnson and his team are dedicated to getting your car fixed and back on the road as soon as possible. It's just part of being there. Call or visit Trent today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're never out of the loop if you have the News 18 app. Download it today for free. The latest breaking news, weather alerts, development stories and Lafayette's only local forecast whenever you need it on the WLFI app. News 18 makes it easy for you to stay up to date with our WLFI mobile app. Keeping you informed when you're on the go. The News 18 mobile app for news from where you live. 